is our key text. Our key text last time was 2 Corinthians 5 10. Today, our key text is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. Most welcome. Thank you so much. Let's pray so that we can start together. Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your word as Lord, you speak to us about the end times. I pray Holy Spirit will guide us and speak to us. We pray for knowledge and understanding and transformation for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody say an amen there. An amen there, please. Amen. Welcome. Now, I want us to go, we, we've been in the big series of, uh, yes, Laban, Karanja, you are welcome, Baba Jesse, you are welcome there. Um, last time, we started with, the, of course, this is the, within the big lesson I'm handling of end times. And one of the things about end times is the rapture of the church. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is the rapture of the church. And then... We, when we handled the rapture of the church, we went ahead to deal with the tribulation period, which will be happening on earth while the church has been raptured. But then, the question we try to answer is, as the world is going through the seven years of tribulation, where is the church? And now the last, the last Tuesday and today, we are answering the question, where is the church in heaven while well, the earth is undergoing the tribulation of seven years? And to answer that question is the church is in heaven. In Second Corinthians, what is the church doing in heaven when it has been raptured? Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may, be, may receive the things done in this body according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. So that is the text we dealt with last time. And we learned that when the church is raptured, the scripture has, tell, has told us, therefore, we must all appear before the judgment seat. And I explained, what we learned what is the judgment seat of Christ. And I explained this in Greek is the bima seat. And I explained, I said, this is a, an, a, it's an Olympics stadium scenario where the victors could kill in a race platform to be rewarded for the, for, to be given crowns or awards because they have won. So the Bima seat was a place of award for victors. It was not a judicial bench where criminals are tried. Because remember we said, those people appearing in the judgment seat of Christ in 2 Corinthians 5.10, they are already in heaven, they have been raptured. So they are not being tried for sin. They are not being judged because of sin. They are being judged because of the work they've done. This is a judicial, it's not a judicial bench. It's the Bema seat is a place to be awarded for the works the believers have done. So nobody will get from, the, from this seat, to be my seat, and go to hell. No. You'll, now we are trying to, the next thing we are addressing now, how will this judgment be? And let's get to our key text in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. It says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. Verse 11. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, straw. Verse 13. Their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Verse 14. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. Verse 15. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. 
So this is the text we want to look into today. When we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the quality of work will be tested. We'll see how, we'll look at how will this test be. When the scripture says it will be tested with fire, simply the Bible says the trial, there will be testing. It simply means a test, a thorough test, a rigorous, accurate test will be there. So, what, what I want you to understand is that when we get to heaven, saints will differ in heaven. We shall not be all, we shall not be equal. Well, or not, we try to fight for equality. I don't know whether it's possible, but in the heaven, equality it will not be there. Let me read you a scripture to support what I'm saying. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41 to 42. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41 to 42 says, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. I want to repeat it again. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. So the Bible is talking about resurrection. When we resurrect, this is the resurrection we read about during the rapture. When the saints will, be, will resurrect those who had died in Christ, you remember that we talked that during rapture, and those saints who will be living will be transformed, and all of them will be caught up together with Christ in the air. And then they go together with Christ, both the transformed saints and also those who, the resurrected saints. Now they are resurrected, that the scripture is telling us. Now the Bible is telling us, the saints there now, after the rapture, in heaven, that is when they are receiving the rewards, they shall be different. And the Bible has told us, it has shown us, all of them will be like stars. But these stars will differ in glory. And the Bible has said that there is the glory of the sun, there is the glory of the moon, there is the glory of the star. For one star differeth from another in glory. So there are several glories we can see here. The glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, the glory of the star. Father, the Bible has said, even when we come to the glory of the star, the Bible says, even the stars differ in glory. So we shall have people with the glory like the sun, Glory like the moon, glory like the stars, and even those stars will also differ in glory. So what the Bible is telling us here, Christians will differ in heaven. We shall not be equal in terms of glory. And this maybe I suppose will also affect maybe the further we shall be from God. I believe maybe some believers will just be almost right there next to God because the glory they, they are so glorious and maybe we'll still others could be a bit far in terms of glory not geographical distance so I need you to understand that all believers let me take you back there when the rapture happens all believers will have glorified bodies glorified bodies but there will be difference in glory and some, as we've seen, shining with a greater brilliance than others, according to the measure of their diligence and commitment to Christ and his work. And that is where we are. Now, I want you to understand something, because I want to put things clear here. We don't get saved by works. We don't get saved by works. We are justified by faith. You don't need to do any works to be saved. But now listen. But those people who are saved need to do works of saved people. We don't need to do acts of righteousness to be saved, to be justified. We don't need to do works of righteousness to be justified. But men who are justified need to do works of righteousness. So it's a matter of order. 
what comes first. Before we got saved, there is nothing we can do to be saved. We just need to believe in Jesus. We are not saved by works of righteousness. But when we are saved and made righteous, righteous men need to do works of righteousness. That is very important for you to note. So faith, saving faith admits us to the kingdom of God, but rewards for good works will decide our rank and degree of glory when we get to heaven. That is very important. Now, when we look at the text we've just read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 10 to 15, there are six things there which represent different building materials. According to the text we've read, Paul is showing us working after we've got saved, working during the work of God is compared with building, building a structure. And himself says he's the master builder. He has a mastery. And therefore he says, from the day we got saved, we got into an engagement. We started a journey of building. Building in the kingdom. That is what he's comparing. So every day, there is a house we are building in a way. There is a structure we are putting up every day. And this structure we are putting up, the building stone is the works we do. The things we are doing for God, the things we do for ministry, the service we render for the kingdom. Those are the building blocks. Now, these building blocks, according to Paul, you can see the house since you got saved. Every day you are laying a block laying a block. Every time you are doing something for God, every time you are serving God, you are laying a block on top of the other. And then Paul says, these blocks have different qualities. These blocks you are laying on top of each other have different qualities. And according to the scripture, the Bible told us there, verse 15, if it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, yet will be saved. Now, verse 14 says, uh, va, va, no, if we started verse 13, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work, the quality. So, Paul is giving us six elements, six different substances, substances of different quality because the scripture has told us each work, man's works, work will be tested the quality of the work the quality so the six elements Paul is giving us are different qualities of work that we do they are different qualities of the work we do for the kingdom of God there are different types of blocks we lay every day. And therefore, it is very important to understand these two qualities of blocks have divide, been divided into two major categories. Category number one is gold, silver, and precious stone. These are non-combustible. These are materials which don't burn. Gold cannot burn silver and precious stones, non-combustible. These exposed to fire will still survive. They will not be burnt. But then there is category two, which he says, wood, hay, and, and straw. Wood, we know it's combustible. We know hay is combustible. Straw is combustible. Exposed to fire, it will burn. So these two categories, these two main categories of three, three, combustible, non-combustible, are types of works, qualities of works we do. They are the quality of building blocks. We are laying on the structure. We started the day we accepted Jesus. Every day, if you are serving every day, depending on when you are serving, because there are people who served the Lord last year. 
that the, their building structure on the site remains only one block. On, only one block is lying there. They did it last year. They put one block. They laid it there. Now, when we come to the judgment seat, the bima seat of Christ, what does it mean when the Bible told us that if anyone builds on this foundation using silver, gold, and costly stones, wood, hay, and straw, the work will be shown on that day and it will be revealed by fire. And then it continues to say, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. You know, that tells us there are some works, some building blocks, the last three categories, which will not survive the fire. There are three categories which will not survive the fire. And the Bible says, verse 15, if it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. He'll suffer loss. Meaning, the quality of the person, the quality of the work of the believer is very important. And we shall see what will determine that. What determines the quality of your work? Because the Bible is clear. Some people have been working. They have been serving. But they have been serving under the last three categories which are combustible. They are serving under the three categories which will be exposed to fire. And then they will be burnt up. The Bible says those people will suffer loss. Why? Because, for example... If somebody did ministry, he's a preacher like me, and he will not meet the criteria we are just about to outline here. I did a lot of work. I spent my money. I spent my time. I spent my energy. But the criteria we are just about to outline, I didn't meet it. That kind of a block, that kind of a work will be like hay, will be like grass, and it will be burnt. And therefore the Bible says, then that is a loss. Because the money I spent, the energy I spent, and all the resources I spent, then that will be a loss. That's what the Bible says. So in the judgment seat of Christ, when we are queuing there in the Bema seat, that will be what will be tested. And the question to you, will your work survive? Will your blocks survive on the judgment seat? Now, what will determine Three basic things in this text. Three basic things in the judgment in the issue of the, of, the, of the fiery test. Number one, there must be work. So some work must be there because we are talking about in the judgment seat of Christ is a reward of work. So there must be work. Therefore, it means if somebody is not working, you don't belong anywhere in the, this whole story. You don't belong anywhere. If there is nothing you are doing in the kingdom, your case is over. There is nothing you are doing there. But there must, number one, be work. And then number two, in this outline, this criteria, there must, the, the, the next thing will be attitude. And the third thing will be character. So the work is there. You must have been doing some work. Then it is essence of essence, your attitude toward the work. And then number three, your character. This will be determinants plus others, but because of the shortage of time, I need to address these are very basic. These are determinants of the quality of work. Every Christian, number one, must be working. You remember the parable of the master who went away. He said, work till put to work until I come. Every believer must be working. If you are a believer and you are not working for the kingdom, already you are incurring a loss. Whatever the reason, because people have many reasons why they don't work. There are many reasons why people don't do ushering. There are many reasons why people don't do evangelism. People have good reasons why they don't give to the church. People have good reasons why they don't pray for. They have all good reasons. 
but that notwithstanding, if you are not working, and elsewhere when they look into the scripture, the Bible will tell us you be ashamed. Another trans another scripture says there are people who be ashamed because you will appear in the bima seat awaiting for a reward, but then in the perusal of the books, you be it will appear you've never served God. I mean. And it is possible. I know people who have been in church for long. I know people who have been born again for long. They've never served God, literally. Literally, they've never served God. They come to church to sit the seat the ashes prepared. They thrive in the prayers intercessors have been praying. They sit under the shelter the tithers have been paying for rent. They drink water somebody has been paying. Everything literally. There are people who will appear in the bima seat of Christ and their reward will be shame. Their reward will just be shame. Nothing more. Because they've never done anything to the Lord. Now, the issue of attitude, the, the issue, the question of attitude, attitude answers the question, how do you do your work? How and why? Why do you sing in the choir? Is it for people to see? Why do you give in the church? Why do you do ushering? In the church. Why do you teach Sunday school? Why do you support the pastor? Why do you serve on the tables? Is it to impress people? Those are the issues. If all those things you did for other reasons. Other than serving and worshipping God. My brother, my sister, you're using hay as a building block. You're using hay as a building block. And once your work will be tested with the fire, it will just be blown out. It will just be blown out. You carry with you with a lot of expectations because of the many things you did, because of the lot of money you gave and all that, but the attitude was wrong. Nothing more. Only fire will answer. You will be saved, but your work will just be burnt. Your attitude is very important. Don't serve things in the church because of people. Now we are out of church. Are you still serving God as you do when people are seeing you? Do you still do ministry now that nobody is there as a preacher? Am I still passionate to preach where nobody is preaching me? There is no protocol to carry my Bible. There are no people to clap for me. There are no people, hey, let's welcome the bishop and clap. Do I still have the drive and motivation to serve God? Do I do it because of the people? When I appear before the judgment seat of Christ, I will suffer loss because if all that I've been doing is because of people, I will suffer a huge loss. Attitude is very important. Then number three, character. Character is very important. There are people who think they ba they'll bail themselves out because of giving to church, because of banging the choir to church, because of washing the seats in the church, because of ushering people, they think they'll bail themselves out of a bad character. They think that will be able, that will, that, that will solve the problem. No, my brother. It will not. Your character should be compliant with what God wants. The character must be compliant. That is very, very important. Now, before we, we, because we'll still continue, I want to give you some examples in history of people who've served God and these people will kill in front of you in the judgment seat of Christ. And one of them is Samphorosa. She was a widow and her seven sons were commanded by the emperor to sacrifice to the heathen deities. She was carried to the temple of Hercules scorched and hung up for some time by the hair of her head 
So she was scorched, and then by the hair of her head, she was hung on the roof. Then being taken down, a large stone was fastened on her neck, and she was thrown into the river where she died. The story didn't end there. She had seven sons. They were fastened to seven posts, and they were drawn apart with pulleys. One hand was tied to one side, the right side, the other one on the left side. And then the pulleys were engaged to move in the opposite direction. Their leaves were dislocated from the body. These tortures not affecting their resolution. They were matured by stabbing, except the youngest one, who was sawed into two, was cut into two. That was a widow and his family. That is how they died because of the work of God. Then we have Felistas, an illustrious Roman lady of a considerable family and the most shining virtues, she was a devout, devout Christian. She too had seven sons whom she had educated, teaching them the ways of God. The eldest was scorched and pressed to death with weights so heavy stones were placed on him so that she, he can denounce Christ. There was then Felix and Philip, the next two. They had their brains dashed out with a club. So they were hit with a club until their brains dashed out so that they could stop serving God. There was the fourth one, Sylvanus. He was murdered by being thrown into a precipice. And the three younger sons, Alexander, Vitaris, and Marshall, were beheaded. The mother, after all this horror, was beheaded with the same sword that beheaded the last three. And that was the end of a whole family. Then there was that man who was called Julian, a native of Cilicia. As we are informed by one called St. Chrysostom, he was seized upon for being a Christian. He was put in a leather bag, and that bag together with him were put a number of serpents and scorpions. And in that condition, he was thrown into the sea. Those are men and women who have preceded us in the faith. The gospel has come this far because of men and women who committed themselves. As we are talking today, the gospel, we are preaching it right into your house. They are Christians who feel it's still some task. They feel it's still an, up, an uphill task to put on their phone and listen to the word of God. What have you done for the kingdom? Sometimes we complain for nothing. Less sacrifice, no input in the kingdom. A complaining church, what shall you stand to present? Because one day you shall stand in the Pima seat of Christ and you shall be paid according to the works that you have done. These people we've read about, they'll stand with you and they shall receive rewards. What shall you receive that day is coming? I want as we continue in this short break, few minutes, I want to answer questions uh, that were asked last time. Agnes asks, when will be the judgment of the saints? Agnes, that will happen after rapture. When the church is raptured, the seven years in heaven, part of the seven years in heaven will be the reward for the saints. And then the second question by Pastor Mike, uh, requesting that I need to comment on the theology of once saved, forever saved. There are people who teach once you are saved, you, there is no way you can backslide. There is no way you can lose eternity. And that doctrine is from hell. From the scripture we learn that faith and obedience go together. We also learn from 1 John 2, 4. One who claims to be a Christian but does not live like one is a liar. So that kind of a doctrine is not biblical. Believers who knew the Lord can backslide and go to hell. That's why the Bible says in the same book of 1 John, you must be careful so that you don't lose that what you have received. You can lose your salvation. Reverend Kyoko was asking, will I know my spouse when we get to heaven? 
This is a very good question. And in one uh, in one class, uh, the 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 student asked one in the church. The the one member asked the pastor the same question. Somebody asked, and the pastor answered. And he was very curious. The pastor was very curious. Why are you asking whether the spouses will know each other? And then he said, if they will know each other, I will not go to heaven. And you can always guess why. <laughs> He'll not want to see his spouse everywhere. Now, this question is very important. When we shall, do after rapture, we shall put on glorified body, spiritual bodies, you remember last time we looked at the question, a hypothetical question Jesus was asked by the Sadducees about marriage when we get to heaven. Jesus said there will not be marriage. Now, whether people will know each other or they will not know each other, the scripture does not put it explicitly. We are not so certain. But for the things we are not certain, the Bible says, dear children, it has not been revealed how it shall be. But we know one thing, when Jesus appears, we shall be like him. There are many things which are not explicit in the Bible. There's no need to speculate. Those are things we shall know. Boniface was asking about the two witnesses, whether they are Moses and Elijah. Well, Boniface, many theologians and church fathers have believed that the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 will be Moses and Elijah. There are all many things to discuss about that. Sometimes that could be so. It may not be so. But many scholars believe there will be Moses and Elijah. And uh, Lydia was asking, will the Holy Spirit be there after the church in rapture? Yes, the Holy Spirit will be there. Because the two witnesses will be preaching, will be prophesying. People will be getting saved after the rapture during the tribulation. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 3 no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 8, no one can get saved without being convicted by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will be there. But the Holy Spirit, operation of the Holy Spirit will not be as much as we have him in what we are living today called the church age. Thank you. Now let's go back to our subject we are in the beamer seat of Christ and works are being judged. And we have seen examples of men and women who have served God. And blessed are those people who got this revelation when they were young. Blessed are those people. One of the things God revealed to me when I got saved is this revelation. And therefore, in the whole of my life in salvation, I've never contended about serving God. I've never been controversial in the service of God. People have come with all who look like facts. They look so consolidated with a defense where they should not serve God. There are all those issues of people contending whether to give to church or not to give to church. And people are happy. Sometimes I listen to the media this week and one lady was saying, I cannot give my hard-earned money to the church. All those things have been there in history. But I would like to tell you what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints. God is not unrighteous, brethren. We will not be the same. We will not be the same. God is not unrighteous. There are people who will shine like the stars of heaven. A time will come, I've always said, when the only thing you will have is what you gave to God. Today in the world, for example, over 260 million Christians are living in places where they're experiencing very high level of persecution. Very high level of persecution. The last year alone, 2,983 2 Christians were killed because of their faith. 9,488 churches and other Christian buildings were attacked. 3,711 believers were detained without trial. 
arrested, imprisoned, and they remain in prison some lifetime. God is not unrighteous. These people cannot compare with Christians who have been in comfort zone. There is nothing they are doing for God. They are mean and critics. God cannot be unjust. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 verse 3, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. We read in the scripture and we looked and we found there is the glory of the sun, there is the glory of the moon, there is the glory of the star and also stars differ in their glory. When we get to heaven, there are people who will shine like the firmament of heaven. There are people who will shine like the sun. There are people who will shine like the moon. And many more others will have different degrees of glory. As we have different degrees of glory for the stars. You have a responsibility. You have a choice to make. One of the things that hinder people from serving God is public opinion. People care so much about people. Let me remind you something. Job said, In this world I came naked, and naked will I live. You came this world naked and alone, and for that matter, you shall live alone and naked. The next juncture you'll find yourself is in the judgment seat of Christ. Who will be in that queue? Reinhard Bonke, T.L. Osborne, all those great men of God, martyrs who have given their life because of Jesus, people who have been sentenced, John the Baptist who was executed will be queuing in front of you. Wake up, my friend. Your days are few. You have an opportunity to prepare for that great day that is not very far. For those who are serving the Lord, don't quit. Don't wear out. Don't listen to the people. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Important words there. Paul says, the first thing, stand firm. Let me tell you, brethren, if you've chosen to serve God, you can't serve God if you don't know how to stand strong. You can never serve God. If you don't know how to stand firm, you can't serve God. I knew people who were so zealous, so passionate to serve God, but they wavered. Here and there, listening these voices, they were not able to stand firm. He continued to say, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. That is the word. Give yourself, not only giving yourself, but the Bible says, give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. God is not unrighteous. God is not unrighteous. There are people who will shine like the stars of heaven. There are people who will shine like the firmament. There are people who will literally be ashamed in the judgment seat of Christ. It's my prayer and my desire that this will change your approach to ministry, will awaken your vigor, you'll awaken your passion and zeal to serve God. Because that day is coming. The Lord bless you so much. Continue putting your questions there. Next Tuesday, we'll continue with this subject. Meanwhile, don't wait for the subject. Start serving God now. Because we have faith about tomorrow, but you're only sure about now. Start serving God now. The Lord bless you tonight. Thank you for listening to this great teaching. Share it. I want to give you an assignment. Please make sure right now you share with at least three people. Share this word with at least three people. Before you put your phone off, 
before you put it aside, please share with at least three people. The Lord bless you. I invite you to give. The till number is there. The account number is there. Serve God with your money. I remind you again, for a day will come while the only thing you will have is what you gave to God. That day is around the corner. It will be. The Lord bless you tonight. The Lord be with you. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Shalom. Good night. Bye.